I purchased the 57 Mini Tweed 5 watt amp kit from Stumac about the same time that I started the Guitar Collector Guy channel. It sat in my shop for the past two years unboxed. I finally got the gumption recently to pull the box out and give it a try to build the amp. I don't know why I did not build it sooner. Recently I was getting over the flu and it seemed kind of a cathartic idea to sit at my bench for a couple of days taking my time working on the build. I read the instructions and it seemed really straightforward. In this video, I've not done another step-by-step -step video. There's some really well done ones already, and I'll cover this later and provide a link. Instead, if you're thinking about doing a build like this, I took really good notes about what I learned, how I would prepare for a build, and what I would do differently. Here's some of my suggestions after building my kit. Read the instructions cover to cover at least once before you start the build. There's a lot there, and they're really well done. They provide a clear method of how to best build the amp. There are five really well done Stumac videos that follow a person as they go through the build of this amp step by step. This is the reason I'm not doing another step by step video. I really recommend that you watch these videos before you do a build, and also maybe watch the corresponding video just before you approach that specific section of your build. Links to the videos are in this video description. Make sure everything is in your kit before you start, so do a full inventory. I didn't do that. I ended up not having a few nuts and bolts that were missing from the sealed parts container, and this made it really difficult to proceed. I'd really recommend to Stumac that they include a few extras of the small parts like this that are inexpensive. When the instructions suggest you stop and take a break, I recommend do it. The kit costs over $850, and you need to keep a cool and focused head while executing the instructions. This will keep you from making mistakes. After you take a break, you'll find in the instructions the direction to go back over the prior section you just completed and double check your work. This is paramount. I actually found three mistakes I had made during my rechecks of my work. It's a lot easier to find and fix mistakes when everything is still disassembled than it is after you've soldered and assembled everything together. It is really difficult to read the numbers on the tube sockets. The tubes plug into these sockets. This is important when you're soldering wires to a specific numbered pin. A suggestion that I have is that you mark somewhere on the plastic part of the tube socket where the number one pin is with a permanent marker. This really helped me. The instructions for this build say it'll take you six hours to complete. I think that this is kind of an understatement, Budget your time expecting that it'll probably be double that. If this is your first amp build, it is not a race. Have a multimeter handy. You're going to need it at the end of the project to do your circuit testing. You'll really need one when you're looking for a resistor to install with a specific ohm value as directed by the instructions. I found that the resistor's colored bands were kind of difficult for me to read, and the colors didn't always match up exactly to the index of parts in the instructions, the pictures that they provided. Really good pictures, but, you know, the resistor is sometimes kind of deviated. I'd look at them and I'd, at a band and I'd think, is it gold, is it orange, or is it yellow? It's better to be certain by actually measuring each of the resistors before you install them by using your multimeter to be sure. Make sure you cut the wires to the lengths they tell you in the instructions, plus a little. Some of the wire runs are a little tight if you use their measurements. Enjoy yourself. If you get frustrated, take a break and then come back. If at the end of your amp build, if your amp does not pass all of the voltage test, go back over your work. Here is the Stumac description of what comes with the amplifier. The cabinet interiors are three quarter inch North American pine, not plywood, just like the ones that were made by the Fullerton factory in the 1950s. The kit uses name brand 6V6, 12AX7, 5Y3 tubes, and vintage spec transformers to give your amp perfect vintage tone, quality period authentic resistors, orange drop caps, and switchcraft jacks for their authentic tone and a lifetime of trouble free use. Authentic fiber eyelet boards, just like the ones used in the original vintage amps. Period correct pushback wire, quality eight inch speaker, and they say that they've created step-by-step -step instructions for each amp kit, bringing down every task into clear bite-sized pieces, which I'll attest to. The kit sells for $854.99, 
Link to the AMP kit is in this video description. I wanted to start a small circuit for this first time that I built an amplifier. Ironically, I'm not a big fan of small water jams. To me, they sound small and kind of overdrive too easily. That being said, I really like this amp as a small low volume practice amp that looks cool and holds a special place in my heart because I built it. The parts and components of this kit seem to be very high quality and name brand components. If assembled correctly, the amplifier should last you for a very long time, probably a lifetime. I do not see myself building another amp. I'm glad I did this build, but I think that I have it out of my system. When I stood back the first time and looked at the fully assembled amp, it was quite a rush to think, damn, I built that and the sound actually comes out of it. It actually looks like a, a guitar amplifier that I would buy. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. 